Welcome to Hard Road Theater's Stage at Home radio serials, where we step back in time and bring you stories and tales from the golden age of radio. Tonight's broadcast of Suspense Theater is brought to you by the generous support of our local State Farm agent, Blake Schrumpf, known locally for providing excellent customer service and offering a wide array of coverage options. From health to auto to homeowners and more, you'll be able to check everything off your insurance must-have list. Plus, save more by bundling. Blake and his team are ready to assist the residents of Madison County and the surrounding areas. They take the title of good neighbor seriously and work to grow authentic, lifelong relationships with every customer. Stop by Blake's State Farm office to meet the team and begin discussing your insurance needs. They are located at 2768 Troxler Way in Highland, Illinois. You can also reach them by phone at 618-654-3344 or by visiting them on the web at www.schrumpfinsurance.com. That's www.schrumpfinsurance.com. Like a good neighbor, Blake Schrumpf is always there for you. This is the Man in Black, here to introduce tonight's suspense episode called Always Room at the Top. The story of a woman whose ambition and curiosity might just lead her into danger. If you've been with us before, you will know that suspense is compounded of mystery and suspicion and dangerous adventure. In this series are tales calculated to intrigue you, to stir your nerves, to offer you a precarious situation, and then withhold the solution until the last possible moment. And so it is with the story Always Room at the Top that we hope to keep you in Suspense. Reception? Yes, she is, Miss Thornton. Very well, Miss Thornton. I'll have her come in. Miss Brandt? Yes? Miss Thornton will see you now. Large corner office at the end of the hall. Thank you. Jean Thornton was a tall, square-shouldered blonde with high cheekbones and a good figure. And nervous as a cat. More than that... I hadn't been in her office five minutes before I knew that she was afraid of something. Her boss, the responsibilities of her job, something. I couldn't understand it. She was an art director of William J. Farrell and Company, one of the best advertising agencies in town. She had everything I wanted, professionally and a couple other ways, and yet she was afraid. I couldn't understand it. Then, yes, yes, these are quite good, quite good, Miss... Um, Brant. Helen Brant. Ah, uh, yes, Miss Brant. Quite good, but, um, cigarette? Oh, thank you. Oh, how cute. <laughs> Silly thing. Mr. Farrell sent it to me from Mexico. Where else in the world would anybody have the patience to sit down and put together a musical cigarette case? But as I was saying, uh, what was I saying? Oh. oh, oh, yes, oh, yes. These are really very good layouts, Miss er, er, Brant. I like them. But I don't quite see how we can use you just now. You said that before, Miss Thornton. Yes, so I did. Well... Look, Miss Thornton, I don't need the job. I'm not one of those desperate people that come in to cry on your shoulder. I have a job at Maxfield and Ellis, but they're stupid there. I'm not getting any place. In a firm like this where people have imagination, you have a chance. That's all I want. A chance. So do a lot of other people, Miss Brandt. Well, I'm not a lot of other people. I think I've got ability, and you know it. Commercial ability. I think I could be professional. Yes, yes. Well, if there's an opening, we'll get in touch with you. You'll get in touch? I know what that means. I've been given the brush off by experts. That will be all, Miss Brandt. I'm sick of being brushed off. I've got ability as much as you have, and maybe more, and I'll show you. Miss Brandt, will you leave my office, or shall I have you thrown out? All right, Miss Thornton. Good day. Of course, that would be the last time I ever lay eyes on Jean Thornton. That's what I thought. 
I went back to my office and worked most of the night, catching up on my own stuff and doing a little extra that I had peddling around town. I was standing on the sidewalk, kidding with the night elevator man while I waited for a cab, and I looked up at the tower against the early morning sky. That dark tower, 36 floors above the street and three blocks up the avenue, where the William J. Farrell Agency had their offices, and where I'd given my right arm to be working. You'll miss all your beauty sleep working this late, Miss Brandt. <laughs> now, Charlie, who says I need beauty sleep? Well, you don't. I like to work at night. It's quiet. Think of all the sunrises I see. Look at that sky. Yeah, it's going to be a nice day, I guess. Look! I saw the body falling, and the scream came to us that same moment. We stood there frozen, horrified, fascinated. Oh, oh lord. I, I wish I hadn't seen that. Charlie, that was someone from the Feral Agency. Whoever it was. Poor devil. A woman! No, wait, Miss Brandt. I wouldn't go up there. Miss Brandt! By the time I got there, a patrol car had appeared out of nowhere, the way they will in this town. And the usual crowd of early bird and night owls standing around gawking. They were trying to cover up the body with a blanket. All right, stand Did back. Stand back there. Who is that? Oh, 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 I wanted to look, but I, I, I couldn't. A cop was picking up stuff that had rolled out of her handbag into the street, going through it methodically, opening things up. And then I heard it. And I didn't have to look. I knew. We gotta get in there. We gotta get in there. Did you see them fall? Hey, where's Mr. Farrell? Farrell's Feral. coming. Feral. I don't know. Feral. Feral. Oh, 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 okay. We've gotta get oh, to see Mr. Farrell. Oh, please. Oh, see, I tell you, I don't know when Mr. Farrell's coming in. She knows. I don't she know. Let us in. You wouldn't want to try to kid the press, would you, sister? Well, I don't know. Ask her something. Listen, you might as well tell us. Please, boys, boys, please, please. I. Oh, I, I can't tell you show. anything so now. I'm from the Daily Planet. Mr. Mr. Farrell, I'm Helen Grant. Mr. Get your foot out of that door now, please. Mr. Please, Mr. please get out of here, Mr. all of you. I told you I can't talk to any reporters now. Give me a few minutes. I'm not a reporter, Mr. Farrell. I'm Helen Brandt. I'm an art director of a small advertising agency, but I've got some samples here for what? you. What? Mr. Farrell, please, just look at these. You're going to have to have a new art director. What did you say? Sure, you're shocked, but it can't hurt her. And I've been trying to see you for months, and now you're on a spot and you just Take those things out of my face and get out of here. Just look at them first, that's all I ask. All I ask is that you... Well. And uh, this one for Parker Shoes. I followed Miss Thornton's general idea, but I've added, well, that. Mm hmm. They're good, Mr. Farrell. And if you say they aren't, I will. All right, all right. They're good. They're very good. But if you think I'd hire a woman who hasn't any more decency than to barge in here at a time like this and try to push. Decency? What's decency got to do with it? Do you need an art director or a Sunday school teacher? Now look, Mr. Farrell, now if you don't mind, my paper wants to know what Miss Thornton was doing in her office at 5 o'clock this morning. She must have been working all night on the new Parker layouts. They have to be out by... They have to be out by 3 this afternoon. Working all night? Maybe went to the window for fresh air. Tired? Got dizzy? Look, Miss, um... Brandt. Helen Brandt. Uh, Miss Brandt. Miss Brandt, I think you're one of the most despicable women I've ever had the misfortune to meet. But I've got a big, a very big job to get out this afternoon. My assistant art director's homesick, and by the time I interview... Thank you, Mr. Farrell. Uh, you can arrange the details with my secretary. In there. And frankly, the less I have to do with you myself, the better I'll like it. I think you'll change your mind about that, Mr. Farrell. Now, Mr. Farrell, if you wouldn't mind... All right, boys. We know things are tough. And you don't want to tell us, but... Yes? Are you, um, Mr. Farrell's secretary? Yes. Oh, well, I'm Helen Brandt. Marie Harris, how do you do? How do you do? <laughs> I'm taking Miss Thornton's place. Taking Miss Thornton's place? I see. Oh, well, yes. Temporarily. Well, you're not one to let the grass grow under your feet, are you, my dear? <laughs> Mr. Farrell said I could arrange the details with you. To be sure. I expect... 
You'd better make out one of your regular employment forms. <sighs> Thank you. Temporarily, you said. Yes. Still, doesn't it feel a bit odd to be filling in a dead woman's shoes that are hardly, uh, cold, so to speak? I don't see anything odd about it, Miss Harris. Somebody would have to. No, of course you wouldn't. <sighs> By previous experience, does it mean just in the advertising business? Any experience that might be applicable. It has occurred to you, I suppose, Mrs. Brandt, that when someone like Miss Thornton is cut mid-career, so to speak, there's usually a reason for it. They say it was an accident. An accident, do they? But will this be all right, Miss Harris? Yes, yes, that'll do, of course. There's always the possibility of suicide. I suppose you thought of that. I suppose it might have been. Uh, will you show me to my office, please? Certainly. This way. You might as well have the dead woman's, that is, Mrs. Thornton's office. And then, of course, there is another possibility, isn't there? What other possibility? The possibility of murder? Murder? Why, yes. Here's your office, Miss Brandt. If you need anything, just call me. I want to make you as comfortable as possible, under the circumstances. I'd met Marie Harris types before, jealous of her authority as the boss's secretary, resentful of every newcomer, and determined to make them uncomfortable. So it was only natural for her to resent someone like myself, a total stranger who walked into the job of the art director for one of the best advertising outfits in town, the William J. Farrell Agency. And even though Mr. Farrell had said temporary, I knew that I had the job. I knew it before the first campaign was over. I was in. And then one night, the first of those funny little things began to happen. I was just taking off my hat and coat when I saw it there on my desk. A picture. A big, framed picture of the dead girl, Jean Thornton. And written across the face of it, it said, Bill, darling, to the swellest guy and the swellest boss any girl ever had. Admiring your predecessor, Miss Brandt? Where did that come from? I'm sure I haven't the faintest idea. It wasn't there when I left last night. Somebody put it there. Possibly some well-wisher, Miss Brandt. Some sincere well-wisher. As a sort of warning? A warning of what? What are you driving at? Miss Thornton and Mr. Farrell were quite close. At one time, they were And what does that have to do with me? You know what happened, Miss Brandt, to Miss Thornton. Look, Marie, are you hinting that female art directors in this office have a habit of falling for their boss and then falling out the window? I'm not hinting anything, Miss Brandt. You asked me for an explanation of how the picture got there. I've given you one. Doubtless, it is far-fetched. Certainly, it must seem so to you. <laughs> it's crazy. Of course. Will that be all, Miss Brandt? Listen, Marie. Let's you and I cut out the formality and let down our hair. Is there anything around here that I, well, ought to know? I'm sure I don't know what you mean, Miss Brandt. All right. The girl who used to have my job is dead. You've been hinting around enough about it. Is there anything that you know that I don't? Now, is that plain enough? Quite. I can only say that I've not hinted at anything. I have perhaps engaged in certain idle speculations on matters which were better left as they were. That's all. Okay, Marie. But the way things look now, I'm liable to be around here for quite a while. Oh, I should think it likely. And you and I ought to learn to get along? You'll have no trouble getting along with me, Miss Brandt. But you mean I may with him? I can only say, Miss Brandt, as your sincere friend... And well-wisher? Yes. That you're working for a man who's subject to singularly strong enthusiasms. Sometimes these enthusiasms are apt to be carried to... extremes. It is essential to appreciate this in dealing with Mr. Farrell. I don't suppose this picture gag would be one of Mr. Farrell's little enthusiasms. Under the circumstances... I should think it most unlikely. And it wouldn't be one of yours, my little well-wisher? No, Miss Brandt. It would not. You couldn't help but believe her. She was so prim and proper. But I was determined to have a showdown anyway on the whole thing. My job and everything. I stalked into Bill Farrell's office with the picture in my hand and without benefit of knocking. Oh, hello, Helen. Come in. 
Something that appears to be from your desk seems to have popped up on mine. Hmm? Here. Where'd you get that? I just told you. On my desk. Your ever-tactful Marie has suggested that some well-wisher left it as a warning. Ah, poor Jean. She gave me that That explanation still seems to leave several questions unanswered, Mr. Farrell. Look, Helen. You'll hear a lot of funny things in this office. Like any other office. Take my word for it, they don't mean a thing. Just do your job, the way that you've been doing it, and you'll, uh... You'll be all right. How right is that? You like the job, don't you? I like the work. I haven't got the job. Do you want it? What do you think? Well, you've certainly earned it, Helen. Will you stop beating around the bush? Am I the new art director of the William J. Farrell Agency or not? (laughs) All right. You are. You are hereby officially the new art director of the William J. Farrell Agency. (laughs) From this day forward until... Until what? As long as you want the job, Helen. Until death do us part, is what he started to say. I forgot it, though. I forgot it almost the moment he'd said it. And for the next 24 hours, I was walking on air. It wasn't just the job. It was something even better. I knew Bill Farrell was falling in love with me. I knew that was just a matter of time, too. Morning, Marie. Mr. Farrell in? Not yet, Miss Brandt. I wish you wouldn't be so formal with me, Marie. Everybody calls everybody else by the first names around here except you. I'm used to more conventional methods in most things, Miss Brandt. Okay, okay. Huh. Let me know when he comes in, though, will you? I want to see him. Yes, Miss Brandt. Hello, Bill, darling. (gasps) Do you hear it? Yes, it's that silly little thing you sent me from Mexico. I got it just this morning, darling. And so I wanted to tell you how sweet it was. And thank you this way for this. Marie! 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 Yes, Miss Brandt? Marie, I I, I just heard her voice. Whose voice, Miss Brandt? Hers! Jean! Miss Thornton's! Why don't you lie down on the couch for a moment, Miss Brandt? You've been working too hard lately, and... I'm going to go get you some water. No, I tell you, I heard it right in this room. In this room? Yes, I know it because there was that that music box too, that cigarette case of hers. Oh, yes, yes, I remember. So do I, because the last time I heard it was down there when they were picking up her things. There's no one here, Miss Brandt. No one but you and me. I know, but I heard it. She was... Was it speaking to you, this voice? No, To Bill. To to Mr. Farrell. Something personal. Ah, yes, I I dare say. Have you ever looked in this closet by the door, Miss Brandt? Why, not especially, no. I think there's probably a perfectly logical explanation for what you heard, Miss Brandt. Yes. Yes, you see? Oh. A dictograph. It used to be Miss Thornton's. They use dictographs for everything in this office. They say it saves them 40000 a year in steno help. I see. Something must have turned it on. Yes, there, you see? This box of pencils, that has fallen off the shelf. It must have been that. What turned it off, Marie? I'm sure I don't know. But it's quite simple, isn't it? Here's the switch. Hello, Beale, darling. Do you hear it? Stop it. Stop it! Yes, Miss Brandt. Now get it out of here. Certainly, Miss Brandt. Is there any particular place you... I don't care what you do with it. Do anything you like. Throw it out the wi- <sighs> What was that, Miss Brandt? Just get it out of here and leave me alone. It's silly. I know that. It could have happened that way. It must have. Just as Marie said. But all the time in the back of my mind was a lurking horror. A nameless thing that I felt hanging over that office. And over me. Something about a girl who was dead. A girl who had plunged to her death from that same dark tower. That was now my dark tower. Plunged, screaming, to her death only a few short weeks ago. The next night, I had to work late again to make up. 
I had been out to supper alone. I was conscious of light still burning in Bill's office when I got back. I wasn't particularly anxious to see him just then. To be truthful, I was avoiding him, I suppose. I'd been in my office about an hour and a half when the phone rang. I thought it was strange because I was certain I'd asked to have my night line disconnected. Out of habit, I picked it up to answer it. Hello, Bill? <gasps> Bill, is that you? <gasps> Bill? Bill? Bill! What, Helen? What? What is it? <laughs> oh, Bill! <laughs> Helen, darling. Here, tell me, baby, baby, what is it? What's happened? I heard her. Again. Heard who, dear? Jean. Jean Thornton. Jean? Yes. On the telephone. I know it was her. I swear it. But darling, it it couldn't have been. Oh, Bill, I think I'm going mad. Oh, Helen, darling, listen to me. The picture? The dictograph? All right, but this? Helen, Helen, look at me. Yes, Bill? I love you, Helen. You know that, don't you? Yes. Yes, darling. I do, but I'm afraid. There's nothing to be afraid of, darling. No, not that. I'm afraid because now I know that you're afraid. I am? Yes, you are, aren't you? Helen, I- Bill, please, you've got to tell me. Now! Now look, darling. I'm in a jam. A bad jam. An awful bad jam. Yes, it must be. It's- it's nothing that you have to worry about. It's nothing that isn't going to straighten itself out. It's nothing that I'm going to let affect us ever. Bill, if it affects you, it does affect us. Darling, darling, you, you've got to trust me just a little longer. Oh, Bill, I, I do, I will. But it's about Jean, isn't it? <sighs> yes. Yes, it's about Jean. Then it was... And she didn't just fall... It was a terrible thing, Helen. Terrible. About as terrible as it could be. But, Helen, just remember this, darling. There's nothing to be afraid of. It'll all be over soon. Very soon. Is that all? All you can tell me? It's all I can tell you now. Oh, darling, I I know what this is like for you, but please, please go home now and forget all about it. How can I forget all about it? Well, try. Try anyway. I got some things to finish up here, and then I'll I'll call for you, and we'll start making our plans. Oh, you will marry me, won't you, Helen? Oh, Bill, yes. Then, then everything's all right. Go on now, go on. All right. Good night for now, my dearest. Good night. I went out. I didn't go home. I couldn't. I walked. Walked for miles, trying to think. But nothing made any sense, except that I was in love and in an agony of fear for what might happen to spoil it. And suddenly I realized that I had to know everything. Now, tonight, whatever it was. So I went back to the office. Bill's light was still on and I was just at the door when I stopped. You were insane to come here. Insane, crazy. Suppose somebody saw you and recognized you. You sent me a message. You said you were... I did not. I gave no message to no one. Why do you lie to me like that? I'm not lying to you. You're a liar. And then I heard it. I threw open the door and she was standing there. Jean. Jean Thornton. A woman who was dead. When I came to, I was lying on the couch in Bill's office. At first it seemed perfectly natural, lying there and Bill sitting beside me, holding my hands, and her there, Jean, standing over by the desk, talking to him. Well, what are you going to do about her? Do? What do you mean, do? You're going to have to do something. She knows, doesn't she? Or she will, when she snaps out of it. I'm not going to do anything. I suppose you're in love with her. What if I am? Because it makes a difference, my sweet, to me. Bill? Oh, darling. Bill? Darling, it's all right. Is she... is she really... Yes. Yes, it's Jean. But I saw her that morning. I I saw her laying. That's what you were supposed to think. Then who was... Just a girl. 
Oh, you might as well tell her. At least then she'll be in it as deep as the rest of us. Jean, please. Your boyfriend there had been dipping into the till, about a quarter of a million dollars worth, of the client's money. My insurance, what the company had me insured for, was just about enough to cover it. Like a fool, I agreed to it. You suggested it. I thought he was in love with me, then. But there was a girl that- A girl who worked in the office. No friends, no family. I fired her the day before. Then I got her to come up here that night. Another chance. Modeling, I said, with my clothes. The cigarette case? I dug up another one. I knew people would remember that. Oh, Bill. I told you it was bad. Oh, darling, I, I don't care. I don't care what it was. As long as... I, I think you'd better let me take charge of things now, Mr. Farrell. Marie! Please don't move. I'm quite prepared to shoot if I have to. Marie, this is insane. It... is it? It's a shakedown. What do you want, Marie? Quite a lot, I'm afraid, Mr. Farrell. And how do you expect to get it? It's your word against ours. Three of us. You forget, Miss Thornton, that you are legally dead. As for the rest, do you remember, Miss Brandt, that I said we used dictographs for practically everything in this office? It was you, then. I tried my best to warn you, Miss Brandt. I'm truly sorry for you. Listen. You might as well tell her. At least then she'll be in as deep as the rest of us. Jean, please. Your boyfriend there had been dipping into the till, about a quarter of a million dollars worth, of the client's money. My insurance. There is more, of course, but I'm sure that would suffice. Now, Miss Thornton, I think you and I had better go for a little talk. Alone. What do you want us to do, Marie? I'll come to you later, Mr. Farrell. For a moment, I must ask you to step into the conference room behind you. You too, Miss Brandt. Marie! Please, Mr. Farrell, not now. I shall have to lock you in, but it will not be for long, I think. You know, of course, there's no other way out, except down. We stood there, huddled together by the locked door, but we could hear nothing. Suddenly, there was a sound, like a window being opened, and then... Oh, please! Marie! 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 You can come out now. What have you done to her? Miss Thornton has, shall we say, taken the easy way out. You mean you forced her? Very well. If you prefer. I'm sure it can make little difference now. You, Miss Brandt, I take it, are in love with Mr. Farrell, in spite of my warnings. Yes. Then I'm sure I can count on your silence, knowing the results to Mr. Farrell if you were to break it. Yes, yes, anything. But I'm afraid your marital plans will have to wait. What do you mean? I think it's best this way, for my own protection. Of course, if anything were to happen to Mr. Farrell, this way, everything would come to me. What would? How? The firm. And the money. You see, Miss Brandt, Mr. Farrell is going to marry me. I looked at Bill. I knew he had to do what she said. What else? I turned and left the room without speaking. In my office, I found a little automatic where, lately... I'd always kept it. When I came back, Bill was staring out the window, and Marie was making up her face from a little compact. They didn't even glance in my direction. Oh. I'm waiting for the police. I've been looking over the new layouts. The Dossett Soap campaign is particularly good. We did it together, Bill and I. The scene was a bride and a groom. And so closes Always Room at the Top, tonight's tale of suspense. That concludes tonight's episode of Suspense Theater, brought to you by Blake Schrumpf, State Farm Agent. Remember, Blake and his team are ready to assist the residents of Madison County and the surrounding areas. They take the title of Good Neighbor seriously and work to grow authentic, lifelong relationships with every customer. Tonight's episode featured the voice talents of Evan Pfeiffer, Mary Knabel, Bill Sullivan, Carlos Munguia, Brian Knobloch, Brianna No, Gentry Pfeiffer, and Linda Coleman. 
Hard Road Radio Serials are available on the Hard Road Theater Facebook page, our website, www.hardroad.org, and as a podcast on your favorite podcast provider, Apple, Google, and Spotify. Thank you for joining us today. I'm your announcer, Bill Sullivan. Have a good day, and please be safe.